On the record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Alexis Coleman Gates, 241018. And why is this name of the person seems so familiar? All right, um, Detective Sabo, your name for the record, please. Detective Steve Sabo. All right, please raise your right hand. I swear from the testimony about to give this to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, you may proceed on the warrant. Thank you, Judge. On 7 21 24, at about 5 32 in the morning, wind up officers were dispatched to 907 County of Wayne and in the state of Michigan concerning a disorderly person that was highly intoxicated. The caller, which is a live-in friend, Raven Bells, waited outside for officers and later reported that the defendant, Coleman Gates, was yelling and screaming at her in her bedroom. The two argued because Coleman Gates was due back at the house at 1 a.m. and she returned after 5.30 a.m. Bells was babysitting or watching Coleman's child. Bells added that Coleman Gates destroyed her home's porch railing and the front storm door prior to officer's arrival. Officers Ames, Coburg, Kyle Cox, and O'Mara made entry and then made contact with Coleman Gates inside the place. She was drunk, extremely agitated and combative per the officer's reports, which was all captured on their Axon body-worn cameras. Coleman Gates refused officers' commands to come outside because children were in the house trying to sleep. Officers advised Coleman Gates that she was under arrest, and immediately she started kicking at Officer O'Mara. The offender was taken to the floor to be controlled and handcuffed. Coleman Gates attempted to bite Officer John Cox, but then actually bit Officer John Ames and Kyle Cox on their left legs during the arrest procedure. Coleman Gates continued to resist and obstruct and kicked at Officer Coburn. In addition to the damaged railing, which is uh, defined in, I think, count five, over 200, less than 1,000. Thank you, Your Honor. I find that the offenses charged were committed and that there's probable cause to leave the defendant committed these offenses. And counsel, your appearance, please. Good afternoon, Judge Attorney Corey Westmoreland, appearing on behalf of Ms. Coleman Gates. Ms. Coleman Gates, would you please state your name for the record? Alexis Coleman Gates. Okay. Now, you've been here before, have you not? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When's the last time you were here? Uh, over four years ago, five. I can't remember what year it was. I know it was like okay. around COVID. All right. So you're not there was something to do. Were you at your sister's apartment, maybe? No, um, where was I? I can't remember. I was another incident of me being drunk. I can't remember where I was at. I think uh, at the time, my girlfriend's aunt's for Father's Day. That's what it was. Okay. All right. I don't know how I remember that. But in any event, um, counsel, as to the arraignment. Yes, Judge. At this time, we are pre prepared to waive a formal reading. My client stands mute. Court with a formal reading. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to have an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one to represent you. And in fact, you've had an opportunity to speak to an attorney today, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you also I have the right to be presumed innocent to be guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a judge or by a jury. And you also have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be against you in court. Do you understand those rights? Yes, ma'am. All right. The court's going to enter through not guilty and you'll be asked to schedule this matter for probable cause conference. And we'll schedule that on August 1st. 9.15. At 9.15 a.m. Ask yes, to bond counsel. Yes, Your Honor. I would like you to know that Ms. Coleman Gates currently uh, is residing in Wyandotte. She's 26 years old, single, uh, mother of one child. Uh, she's not currently on probation or parole. She has no other pending matters out of any other jurisdiction. And she did assure me that she would be appearing at all future court dates and does understand the importance of appearing. I would just ask that all that be taken into account when assessing a bond. Okay. And the court's going to also state that um, I, the court will sign the petition in order for court appointed attorney for felony matters. I don't, I don't see one unless I missed it. I don't see it. 
And so, ma'am, you live in Wyanda? And how long you live in Wyanda? Because I show you in Van Buren Township. I've been back in Wyanda for two weeks. I currently reside at Ravens at the 907. Well, and so who's Raven? That's who was watching the child the night of the incident. So, okay. the child is it your child? Yes, my biological son. Okay, who has custody of your biological son? He's currently in my brother's care, Malik Coleman. Okay, and where does Malik Coleman live? Lives in Ohio. Okay, and so who currently has the, who's taking care of your son right now? If he's in Michigan. No, he's in Ohio with my he Raven currently has me supposed to pick him up today from here. Um, all I know is what CPS called and told me today, Your Honor. So I'm assuming he's I'm between if he's here or in Ohio yet. I know he is going to Ohio for sure, though. I talked to my brother this morning. Okay. So how old is your son? Four months. Four months old, and your brother has custody of him. Yes. So he's in his custody. I'm sorry? He's in his custody, Your Honor. Is that by court order? They, CPS just came and got him and took him there and asked me if it was okay for him to be there. I said yes, because that's where I plan to reside once my court dates here are done. It's in Ohio with him. All right, let me clarify. Before July 21st, who had custody of your son? He was in Raven Bellis's care. I have custody, he was in Raven's care, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, and now that CPS is involved, now he's going to be staying with your brother in Ohio. Yes, ma'am. All right, that makes more sense. Okay. Sorry, I'm flustered, Your Honor. No, that's okay. And how long have you been there for two weeks? How long is it? So, did you move in there or were you just staying there for a couple of weeks? What's that scenario? She let me move in, but tomorrow I would have to leave in a few months just until I could figure some things out. Wow. Once I got situated with work and uh, stay with place to stay with help from DHS. Do you work? I have an interview Saturday for McDonald's. I'm going back to work. And I'm waiting on a call from my GM at Jimmy John's to see if I can be brought back on the team. Are you currently on probation for anywhere? I am not. Are you out on bond in any other jurisdiction? Can you repeat that? Are you, on Are you out on bond in any other jurisdiction? No, ma'am. Ever failed to appear in court? No, ma'am. All right, detective asked to, um, or I'm sorry, counsel asked to find. Judge, I, I already went through that. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, detective, detective say what oh. was. Uh, just to clarify, we have the court appointed paperwork back here with the court officer. We'll bring it to the court. Yesterday, okay. um, uh, Child Protective Services uh, Specialist Adam Brzezowski came and interviewed uh, Ms. Coleman Gates and made that arrangement with her brother, just for the record. And um, I think that it's fairly reasonable for 10,000, 10% for Ms. Coleman Gates. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. You said 10,000. Um, all right, well, here's what I'm going to say. Based upon the nature of the charges and um, the behavior that's been alleged in here, and uh, the court's going to order the following. The court does find that a $10,000, 10% bond is appropriate to ensure the return of Ms. Colvin Gates, as well as to ensure the, the, her compliance with this court's bond conditions, which are as follows. You are not to have any contact with Ms. Bells. Yes, ma'am. That would, um, her first name being Raven. R-A-I-D-Y-N. Bells with two E's, B L L E S. That's phone contact, text message, email, social media, third party, anything of the like. You are, you're not to enter the premises at time. You may go there one time accompanied by a police officer to get items that you need for your day-to-day -day living. You're not to possess and consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. You're not to possess or have access to firearms and or any weapons. Do you have any of those? No. 
All right. You also are not to be released without GPS and alcohol tethered through the Wayne County Jail. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you, Judge. We're not going to go off the record for it. Well, we're just a mess. I'm just sitting in the lobby. We didn't bring her in yet. Did she come in? Yeah, I guess. But I mean, she was supposed to be here at 11 30. Yeah, she didn't get here until 12 10. I was on the door and she came in at 12 10. Perfect. Good. Let's have her come on in. Okay. The city of Wyanda versus Jack and Manasse, 24350. <sighs> Ms. Vanessa, you're scheduled to be here at 1130. Yes, uh, we've been in car trouble. Did you notify the court? No, we were. No, you did not. Your attorney, attorney was here. My phone with me. Ma'am, your attorney was here. This matter, in fact, you were here all last week. You kept coming in last week, and we weren't able to see you because okay. we because of our docket. And so you had failed to appear. Um, May 6th for your PSI, we, and then we adjourned sentencing to May 29th. Then you failed to appear for May 29th. So the court issued a warrant, and then you were supposed to have been here July 15th, and you weren't. Then you came in a couple days last week after the court issued an immediate warrant, and then you were scheduled to be here at 11:30. We put this on the docket for 11:30. You had show till 12 10. I am not allowed the house, and my sister hasn't given me my mail. When I yeah, you were here this week. You were here to get the date and time for today at eleven thirty. Yes, my mom's car broke down and we needed a jump. And okay, so at any point did you contact the court? I don't have my phone with me. I swear to God. I well, how did somebody contact call. somebody for a jump? I don't know. I was in a hurry trying to get here. Ma'am, ma'am, you're saying that your mom's car wouldn't start. You needed to have the battery jumped. Well, Who contacted somebody to jump the battery? There was a gentleman that drove by in a tow truck from Riverview Towing. Well, perhaps I, I should just have perhaps I should just have you stay overnight in the wine dot jail and we can make sure you're going to be here in the morning. I'll, I'll be here in the morning. Yeah. 8 30 tomorrow morning. Mr. Serrano's gonna be here tomorrow. 8 30 tomorrow morning, not 8 31. No, I'll be here at 8 30. 8 30. And I'm sorry. I am very sorry for being late and to your um, in court house. I'm not coming out with it. I'm sorry. If you're at a test right now, what's in your system? Um, my prescribed medicine. Are you taking it as prescribed? Yes. You're sure? Yeah. I'm because it seems as though you're not. What is it that you're prescribed now? Um, I take two Xanax, one Xanax in the morning, one in the afternoon, and two at night. Did you four the next day? Yes. And you only took two this morning? Yes. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Thank you. Let's go off the record. Okay, thank you very much. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. <laughs> go! Will you hand me my screen box? <laughs> I'll go Freak. in the matter of or come on two four three five three. Attorney Corey Westmoreland appearing on behalf of Miss Bond. Miss Bond, would you please state your full name for the record? Erica Ann Bond. All right, thank you. And today's date scheduled for a jail review. This court um, sentenced you on May fifteenth to sixty days jail. We suspended that jail and set this for a jail review. You were ordered to test on April 3rd and May 15th. We, and on May 15th, we increased your testing. You tested positive for alcohol on June 21st. You tested positive for hydrocodone and hydromorphone, which you had a prescription for 14 days. And the last prescription you gave to probation was dated April 24th. So when you tested positive for those, for those drugs, ma'am, we don't show you have a valid prescription. Also, you tested positive for alcohol again on June 27th and hydromorphone. Again, on July 9th, you tested positive for hydrocodone and hydromorphone. And so, counsel? Yes, Your Honor. After speaking uh, with Ms. Bond, um, Judge, I would like you to know that she did 
drop off prescriptions um, to probation yesterday uh, for the hydrocodone and hydromorphone. Uh, it, as far as testing positive for alcohol, she is prepared to enter a guilty plea and take responsibility for uh, alcohol okay. system. Okay, and she doesn't have to enter a guilty plea, counsel, because this is um, this is uh, a very yes. So, ma'am, what prescription did you drop off? I dropped off my medication list and also my last four drug um, tests from the doctors for the last four months and the medications that I have been on. And I believe uh, the drug tests were a 21 panel drug screen. Uh, 22, I believe. 22. I'm sorry. Yes, they do drug tests for alcohol also. Okay, well, that doesn't have anything to do with, well, well, while I'm waiting for that, you're not prescribed alcohol, correct, ma'am? No, I am not, Judge, and honestly, I have not consumed a bit of alcohol. I have been very on my P's and Q's. My mother is having seizures. I have to be able to drive because she's not supposed to be able to drive. And I have three kids here I am the sole provider for. So I have been on my P's and Q's. I asked my attorney to see about getting an alcohol tether because I was on one of those before. I did not test dirty, not one time. I would be willing to even come to the police station to blow every morning. Just um, I would continue to do the urine for my drug screens. I just ask to be able to blow every day. In addition as well, Ms. Bond, uh, you indicated to me that you are uh, seeking outpatient treatment as well. Yes, I am. I have an appointment at three o'clock today for mine and my children's insurance. We were cut off. And I am, I have been seeking, but I just haven't had insurance. And I uh, was just hired at a job also. Okay. So let's, let me ask a couple things. So you're claiming that um, you haven't consumed a drop of anything, but yet you want the alcohol teller. Then you're claiming that you have a valid prescription and you haven't tested positive for alcohol or anything that's not prescribed but you're telling me that you're starting um, substance abuse treatment. Um, yes, because honestly, Judge, I'm being totally honest with the courts in my history. I've never had a problem really with alcohol. It was prescription pills. And I still do need some sort of counseling just to help me get by every day and to be the best I can be. Okay, Ms. Bond, let me finish, please, before you interrupt me, because I wasn't done. Oh, I'm sorry. Now you're also saying that you are supposed to start work today. I was just hired in. I um, just obtained a car. I'm going to get it legal today. I um, can start my training anytime after I get my car legal. It's at Joe out at the airport. What is that? It is in Romulus, Michigan. I know where the airport is, ma'am. What is Joe? Oh, it is a, um, I prepare the food for the planes on the trolleys and drive them on the tarmac to the airplane and load them on the airplane for the cabin and crew. And so how long has it been since you've worked, ma'am? Um, I have not worked since I um, worked at Family Dollar and Mario's. Um, I would say Feb January was the last time I was working. I was trying to um, be more present for my son here that was going through some problems. Oh, yes. I don't know if your son's been here with your mom. Yes, he's sitting right next to me right now. He's doing awesome. Okay, ma'am, that's great to hear, but please stop interrupting me. Okay, so you're telling this court you've been the sole provider for your children, your three children, but you haven't had a job. So how are you providing for your children? I do babysit and I do... Um, uh, boat detailing and car cleaning just to uh, make ends meet. 
My mother also helps me, but she is on disability. That is why I've I've been seeking employment and I just obtained this job because it's getting too hard. Bills and and tests for drug tests and all this stuff. I, I need to be working and also it'll give my mind somewhere to be. We're going to pause the record for just a moment while I um, review this. Just a moment. Please explain yes, to me which one of your medications, so I have your list of prescriptions, which one of your medications contains a hydromorphone? Tell me which one. It is. I just called yesterday and spoke with the doctor. I didn't even know, but it is the Norco. What? Yes, I did not realize that. I didn't even know what it was. Okay, Ms. Bond, Ms. Bond, the hydrocodone would be in the Norco. I, I understand that, Judge. I That's what I asked them when I called, and she said, no, absolutely, it will come back, hydromorphone. And that is why she included my last drugs for drug screens, because it is positive in there. And if I was on anything other than my medications, I would not get a new Medicaid. I, they would not give me my next medications for the month. I would be cut off. And so what do you take that for? I have endometriosis. I, I had cervical cancer and I also have scoliosis. <sighs> I've been in four car accidents. I've had a lot of uh, three surgeries in the past, like three, four years. Okay. So what's interesting is that hydromorphone, it does show is a metabolite of hydrocodone. So let me just see here though. Your drug test that you have taken here so let me see what date you start i'm showing your hydrocodone you just started uh this shows july 16th is when your prescription was started i have a prescription for every single month that i have i have not never stopped getting a, a prescription for years for narco i can't i've that I, a problem. first of all that's that's a problem that's a serious problem. I, a I understand it is, and that's why I want to seek treatment. Let me finish. Let me finish. That's a very serious problem. You've been on it for years. That's the first thing. The second thing is I do not show on here any prescription for hydrocodone prior to July 16th. This, the, the document that you submitted, patient medication summary, it says refill on July 16th, starting on July 16th. I'm I'm sure I'm sure your honor I could show you my bottle for June. I'm sure I still have it next to my bed. Okay. And I so have all my prescriptions. <laughs> I can turn in any documents you need for that. I thought that they should because the nurse told me she included my last four drug screens and all my prescriptions. I I just assumed it was for the last four months for both. So, you, um, no, you just provide those. I, I provide, I, whatever, um, list and, and meds, they told me they gave it to me for the last four months. I was just uh, under the assumption it was for the drug test and my prescriptions. Well, I don't show anything regarding your prescriptions regarding the hydrocortisone, but in any event, man, in any event. Right, you have <clears throat> multiple alcohol positive tests, which clearly you're not supposed to be using those for. Uh, that are with the, with the medication that you have, and it's also what I show here is that your prescription for hydrocodone was only for 14 days, and you submitted that prescription on April 24th. And again, July 9th, you're tested positive for that. And it doesn't show a valid prescription for that. Also, what's interesting to note 
It's very, it's very um, specific. June 27th, he tested positive for alcohol and hydromorphone, but not hydrocodone. So if you, were, if, you if, if the hydromorphone, right, and it shows, I, I looked it up here, it does show that hydromorphone could show up in a test with hydrocodone, but hydromorphone is not going to show up by itself and not with hydrocodone if the hydromorphone is a result of your neurocodone. So, then at the end of the day, you've violated this court's order and you were drinking alcohol. You've combined that with um, pretty um, high level prescription medication, which is a huge, huge concern for this court. Especially since your chart, you pled guilty to possession of controlled substance. So what this court's going to do is this court is going to have you serve your 60 days jail. Your Honor, my kids have school in less than 30 days and no one to drive them. I am the only person here to take care of my children. Ma'am, I'm going to give you until Friday. You need to make arrangements so that they have somebody that can get them to and from school. And what about to raise them for 60 days when my mother is having seizures every day? Ma'am? Your mother has been raising your children for a while while you were but For the, the past <laughs> month, she's been having many strokes and many Do seizures. Do not interrupt. Do not interrupt me. Ma'am, at the very least, at the very least, this gives you time to make sure that you're clean and getting the help that you need. So I'm going to order you to serve 60 days jail. You are to report. On July 26th, I will state that you may be tethered to treatment through the Wayne County Jail if you request, upon your request. Okay. Um, could I ask a question, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what does that detail um, when I turn myself in um, and I do request the tether? Does that mean I'll be on probation? Do, how do I go about yeah. that? No. You will, you're going to be tethered. If you request treatment, then you will be tethered to a treatment facility through the Wayne County Jail. You'll be processed into the Wayne County Jail, and then they will send you to a facility that they contract with, and you'll be tethered to that facility. Okay. Okay. Make sure you're appearing on July 26th. Otherwise, the immediate report will be issued for your arrest. Okay. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Have a good day. Forget our Are you kidding me? Oh my God. You have got to be kidding me. What? What is going on today? This is. This is just, Let a day is absolute. I need an interpreter when I cannot express myself something. Oh my god, search. Put that cigarette out. I don't give a crap that you are outside of this. this. What is wrong with everybody today? You know what, Miss Green? We're going to start bringing people in person. We're going to learn how to act in a corporate. <laughs> Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Ma'am? Can you hear me? No. Okay. Come and go. No, 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 no,